Yes, they're finally official. Three new Galaxy S21 phones. After months of leaks and rumors, Samsung has finally official unveiled them. And here is what we're talking about. Now, first of all, let me mention that I don't still have these phones. They are on their way to the office and they'll be coming very, very soon for our full reviews. But right now we're talking based on the official specifications and what Samsung has presented to you. So here's what we have. Three new Galaxy S21 phones. The S21, the most compact one, 6.2 inch screen size. The S21 Plus, slightly larger phone, 6.7 inch size. And then the big bad boy, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra with a massive 6.8 inch screen size, but also it's a way thicker phone. So it's bulkier, it has a larger battery, the largest of the bunch, and some improvements in the areas of the camera most notably, and also in the area of the screen, which is now brighter. But let's first talk about the price because here Samsung is doing something that we didn't quite expect especially considering last year's pricing so let me quickly remind you that last year the galaxy s21 ultra used to cost starting price fourteen hundred dollars one thousand four hundred dollars this was a lot of money even for a flagship phone this year samsung has learned its lesson and the prices are way lower much better so the galaxy s21 the small one starts at eight hundred dollars very reasonable price then we have the S21 Plus, starting price $1,000. And the S21 Ultra, starting price $1,200. US That's great news. These are some steep discounts considering last year's models. And they're more in line with what the market currently is willing to pay, what users are willing to pay. And let's start with why the Galaxy S21 is so affordable let's say at $800 it's a reasonable price it's not cheap of course and one such reason is that it's made of plastic so the back of the S21 is plastic while the S21 Plus and S21 Ultra use glass both on the front and the back these two models actually use the latest Corning Gorilla Glass Victus technology with improved drop protection while the smaller S21 is just made of plastic, which is still a great material, it looks stylish. And the S21 is also the one that comes in the largest variety of colors. You have the signature violet color, Samsung calls it Phantom Violet. You also have the Phantom Pink model, you have the Phantom Silver and the Phantom Gray. So four color options for the S21. Now, when you jump over to the S21 Plus, you have less color options. And then when you jump to the S21 Ultra, you only have two color options. You have a gray one and a black one. And actually Samsung will be offering some exclusive colors for this phone only on its website. And let's dive a bit deeper in the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which is the most advanced, most luxurious phone in the bunch. And what's exciting is that for the first time in the Galaxy S series, the Galaxy S21 Ultra will support the S Pen. Now, unlike the Galaxy Note phones that always used to have the S Pen, the S Pen on the S21 Ultra is not included inside the phone. You cannot tuck it, stow it inside the phone, but it's sold separately. You have to purchase it separately. And in order to have it always at hand, you actually have to buy a case. Samsung is selling two such cases where you can place the S Pen. And interestingly, since the S21 Ultra uses a Wacom digitizer, you can also use other digital pens from companies like Stettler, for example, so you don't have to rely on the Samsung made S Pen. Now let's talk about the biggest highlight of the S21 Ultra, shall we? The camera. You have a huge camera island on the back of the phone, which kind of blends with the side of the phone for a very stylish look. It actually, there's the same look that you get on all three Galaxy S21 phones. But the S21 Ultra is special because first the main sensor, it's a 108 megapixel generation to huge sensor that gives you final 12 megapixel images by combining nine pixels into one, better low light performance, better resolution, improved all around, and also the focusing. The S21 Ultra used to have a problem with the focusing and now Samsung admits this and it includes a laser autofocus system on the S21 Ultra for faster focusing both during the day and at night. But that's not where the story ends. Most excitingly on the S21 Ultra, you get back that space zoom branding, which means you can still go up to 100 times digital zoom. And in terms of native zoom, you have not one, but two different lenses. You have a three times optical zoom lens, 
once and then on the other hand side you also have a 10 times periscope zoom lens and then you also have an ultra wide camera of course and you can use all these four cameras also for video up to 4K 60 resolution, great overall camera performance on the S21 Ultra. Now speaking of the S21 and S21 Plus, they're a bit of a downgrade in the camera department, but that's why they're not so huge. They're thinner phones, so they use smaller sensors. So for example, on the uh, S21 and S21 Plus, you have three camera sensors. You have a main camera, you have an ultra wide, and you have one telephoto lens, which can zoom up to three times. And then of course you have digital zoom that can go further. One similarity shared across the whole Galaxy S21 lineup is the processor used inside. Now all three Galaxy S21 phones in the United States are powered by the latest and greatest Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chip, while the rest of the world will be getting all three phones with the Samsung made Exynos 2100 chip and this time for the first time in a while Samsung has made a chip that is fully fully comparable to the Qualcomm Snapdragon solution identical performance, even slightly better in Geekbench multi-core benchmarks and overall great performance, great power efficiency, so you won't be getting that traditional the slight decline in performance that you used to get before. Now, one interesting thing, a signature features for Samsung phones for years was the micro SD card slot. Well, it's gone. You no longer have this option on the Galaxy S21 series, which might be a good, might be a bad thing. Now, if you're a power user who uses a micro SD card on a regular basis, of course you're gonna miss this, but for the vast majority of users who probably don't use it or just share their files on the cloud, it probably won't matter so much. And what's interesting is that now Samsung is kind of copying Apple in its approach. It has the S21 Ultra, for example, has a 128 gigabyte model, and you can also buy a 256 gig model, and you even have a 512 gigabyte model for those power users who want the maximum storage. Now, my personal favorite feature about the S21 series is the improved fingerprint scanner. I have used many Samsung phones in the past and I always, always feel so disappointed by the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. But right now, with the new series, for the first time on a Samsung flagship phone, you have the generation two, second generation Qualcomm ultrasonic fingerprint scanner, 50% faster speeds, 70% larger, size of the sensor itself so it's easier to find easier to press and it works faster so it's overall win 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 and this is my favorite new improvement in the s21 series okay let's talk battery life because there are some differences here the s21 features a 4000 milliamp hour battery same as last year's s20 the s21 plus however brings an improvement last year's s20 plus used to have a 4500 milliamp hour battery and now you get a 4800 milliamp hour battery that's a big jump and it should mean better performance of course and finally the s21 ultra still has the 5000 milliamp hour battery same as last year and the biggest of the bunch but notice the gap between the s21 plus and the s21 ultra battery size is not that big this year so there is something interesting, Samsung doesn't provide official battery life stats or numbers, but it does say that the S21 and S21 Plus have an all-day battery, which is good, right? But the S21 Ultra, it says something interesting, it exceeds all-day battery, so you can expect a day and a half out of the S21 Ultra on a regular basis. And if you're not using your phone that much, I would safely say that you could probably go two days off the charger on the S21 Ultra, so that's one important advantage that this bigger and chunkier phone has. It also has a brighter display, 1500 nits, peak brightness, great for outdoor use, and it also can go lower when you use that dynamic fast refresh rate. Last but not least, no charger in the box. No surprise for those of you who are following the leaks and rumors, but still a bit of a disappointment for premium phones. If you have a charger, no big deal, but if you don't, you'd have to buy one separately. And interestingly, last year's S20 Ultra used to support 45 watt fast charging. This year, all three Galaxy S21 phones max out at 25 watts. No idea why, but that's a bit of a downgrade. Charging speeds are not as fast this year. Maybe that's to preserve battery health over the long run, but it is what it is. And there you have it, guys. A quick overview of the Galaxy S21 series. Which one is your personal favorite? And are you going to buy one? Now, my personal favorite is the Galaxy S21. That might sound weird, but the Galaxy S21 Ultra just seems a bit too big for me. I like my phone to be compact, to fit easily in the hand, so you can use it just with one hand. 
and the Galaxy S21 is all of that at a more affordable price, just $800. I think Samsung has the pricing right, it has the top performance chip, it has the improved cameras, so that's, that's a great option for me, but what is your personal favorite? Are you going all the way for the S21 Ultra? Or what are your thoughts on the S21 series? Let me know. My name is Vic. This is Phone Arena. Don't forget that if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and I'll talk to you in the next one.